Hi, my name is Brian Robertson, and the goal of my project is to create the beginnings of a minimalist operating system. I will have a basic bootloader start in 16-bit real mode, perform any necessary disk and memory operations, and then enter 32-bit protected mode before handing off control to the kernel. Then the basic kernel will then take over the, uh, the control of the disk and memory operations and provide a simple text interface. Most of my work for this project so far has still been research and reading, then rereading tutorials on bootloader and kernel creation. I have learned a lot about the lower level workings of computers and their startup processes. And the more I learn, the more I see just how much there is, how involved the, even, even the boot process itself, how complex and involved it is, and the handoff to the kernel, how many steps are involved. Um, for example, the, the bootloader generally has to map the memory of the computer before it hands, hands it over to the kernel. It, uh, it'll detect video modes, It'll detect drives and so forth and basically make a map of everything before even handing it off to the kernel. So the bootloader creation itself is quite involved. And then you get into the kernel and the kernel creation, which is also quite complex. Uh, one of the most important tools that I've been using so far in my project is called QEMU, a quick emulator. It is an open source process processor emulator, and it allows me to simulate the boot process without actually having to cycle through an entire startup and shutdown of my machine. And it also has built-in safety features that protect my system. For example, my bootloader currently is written in assembly, and while it's, it, it's very simple, When it starts the computer, just by default, um, the computer always starts in, well, when we're talking about x86-64 X architecture computers, uh, the bootloader that I'm writing computers for, it'll start in 16-bit real mode by default. And any simple mistake in the, in the bootloader, uh, write errors, memory operations, you could accidentally, you could very simply accidentally overwrite sections of your memory or hard drive space, which could result in a crashed computer. I could overwrite my Windows operating system or other operating systems on my, my computer. Or worst case scenario, I could brick my entire machine. So the reason QEMU is so important is because instead of performing the boot operation on my physical uh, processor and using my actual memory and hard drive directly, it basically creates a virtual memory space for the boot to occur inside of, and it, uh, it virtualizes a processor and memory and a hard drive, and it creates that limited memory space to protect my hardware. So it's very useful. And it's, it's also a lot faster using QEMU to simulate a boot rather than go through multiple boot cycles just to test. I, I still have a long way to go in my project and a lot more to learn. After getting my bootloader to hand off to my basic kernel, I will still have to create the drivers for my keyboard and monitor. and finding the memory responsible for what is displayed on the monitor and manipulating it to create an image will definitely be a, uh, a challenging process, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. By far the most interesting thing in this project so far has been the information, articles, papers, and books about OS development that I have seen and been able to read so far. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to see the, the designs for different operating system features and the ideas for 
better operating systems out there. Um, and just to learn about everything that an operating system entails, all the all the things that it does behind the scenes that you don't even think of, uh, the processes it has to keep track of, how it how it pages the memory. And, you know. uh, thanks for listening. Um, I'll post my sources in the comment section below or the video description. So you should definitely check them out.